think Ohio's going to surprise a lot of people tomorrow by delivering its state for John McCain. Yeah. I hear there's some million people that are going to gather in Chicago for a big celebration with Barack Obama. I want them to know it's going to be a long, cold night. Because <laughs> we're going to be celebrating, and we're going to be celebrating all over the country. We're going to work real hard to make the calls to turn on our voters. That's what's key right now. It's a very close race. It's going to come down to just a few calls and a few visits that make the difference here. But the impact of the choice we make is going to be heard for a long, long time. It's going to be known in this country in a way that really is quite extreme. Because these two guys would take the country in a very different direction. John McCain would take us to a, in a direction which would strengthen America and make sure that our future is bright and prosperous and safe. Barack Obama would take us down the pathway to Europe with big government, big taxes. I knew that wasn't popular here. <laughs> yeah, you look at the two men and their position, the contrast is very clear. With regards to jobs, Barack Obama would cost America millions of jobs. Now why is that? Because he'll raise taxes on job creators. That costs jobs because he's not going to use coal. Barack Obama wouldn't use coal. Nuclear power, offshore drilling, that means more money out of our economy. That costs jobs because he'll impose unions on small businesses. That costs jobs. It's the wrong course for America. Restricting trade, that always sounds good on the surface. But if we don't let people send things here, then we can't send things there. And we're the biggest exporter in the world, and we need to have the markets open for our goods and our services. John McCain, on the other hand, understands, and this is the way I believe we ought to go, that if you want to see a strong economy, you don't raise taxes on anybody. <laughs> John McCain, as you know, has a massive program of tax reduction for middle-income Americans. He helps people get health insurance the way it ought to be done, with private incentives to get people to get insurance rather than having a Barack Obama-style government takeover. That's the wrong way to go for America. And of course, uh, perhaps one of the biggest differences relates to what we're dealing with around the world. John McCain understands the challenges of the world. He doesn't need a, a briefing on why Russia might want to invade Georgia, or the fact that Georgia is a country, not just a state, by the way. <laughs> just kidding about that, Barack. But uh, John McCain has been in the places in the world that are challenging, that are threatening, that are, that are places of significance. John McCain also understands the threat from radical, violent jihad. Now, John McCain wants to bring our troops home by the end of his first term. He said that's his goal. Barack Obama says he's going to bring the troops home, too. The difference is, I want a president <laughs> who will bring our troops home in victory. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be close. I saw the Mason-Dixon poll yesterday. It had uh, Ohio two points in John McCain's favor. Uh, other polls go different directions in different states. I don't know how it's all going to add up. But I can tell you that we desperately need to elect John McCain and Sarah Palin as the, the leadership of our country. John McCain has been in the Senate during the Reagan Revolution days. He's seen the growth of our economy. He's understood the ups and the downs. He knows what creates jobs. John McCain has the experience that's necessary to guide our economy in a troubled time. He's also a man that has been tested and proven time and time again to love this country, to be able to sacrifice for this country. He understands the challenges of the world. In a troubled, challenging world, America needs John McCain and Sarah.